So last week, uh, we talked a bit about the, uh, the, the basic SQL. So uh, let me share my screen. So last week, we talked about the uh, so-called the basic SQL. And I think we were uh, halfway, almost halfway there, almost to the end of the lecture slides for, for 5A ready. I'm just going to set up everything uh, properly. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and uh, this is where we are at. So we are talking about uh, how we can match uh, uh, various criteria, uh, the raw cards, uh, querying our multiple tables. So with that, we have uh, talk, we talked about join conditions, querying our multiple tables, how we can join uh, across multiple tables. Yeah. So uh, oh sorry. Uh, so firstly, uh, yeah, I forgot to wish you all a good evening. So thank you for coming joining with us uh, this evening again. So yeah. Uh, some uh, very, very short announcements. I released assignment one already. I believe some of you had hoped that it was released uh, last week, but I, I couldn't get to it uh, until this uh, week. I'm sorry about it. Anyway, it's being released, uh, so yeah, I can just uh, go ahead to, to do whatever you need to do and uh, let me know if you have any, any issues there. Yeah. Uh, anyway, next, uh, this coming, uh, either this coming Thursday or next, uh, Tuesday, we'll be doing a little short uh, tutorial. So in the tutorial, I'll be running through some questions that are very similar to the assignment that was given to you. So that is to uh, sort of really help you to get the assignment done. Uh, but uh, yeah, so if you were to refer to that tutorial, what you should have uh, almost zero issues uh, getting the answers correct for the assignment. The deadline is 10 October. Yes, correct. Uh, it is as what I mentioned there. I, I can't remember the deadline, but it is as what I mentioned there. Hmm. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's been a long day for everybody. Yeah. But uh, thank you so much for making the time and extra effort to be here uh, this evening. Yeah, so we were talking about uh, querying on multiple tables. And uh, then uh, I think we ended off with aliases. Aliases, uh, strangely, this renaming of tables is very, very, very important. <clears throat> Excuse me. Very, very, very important. So why? Because when you're doing multiple joins, right? especially in cases where you need to join your own table, uh, if you don't rename them, it, it is impossible for you to be able to do that in the SQL language. So I, I think we'll go on with some examples. So one of the examples is uh, to find how do we find the students who took both courses 211 and 225. I think this this was the last example we went through the last week. Uh, sorry, last last week, yeah. Where we talked about whether to be a uh, select uh, so called uh, student dot name from student where uh, SID equals to 211 and SID equals to 225. And we discussed that this is not the correct query to do because of this, we will have, end up with empty sets. So this is not the right one to do. Whereas what we require, what will be required to do at least at this point of time, one, one of the tools that we know is a, is a join. Later on, we will be able to also uh, do intersect. So you should be conversant in uh, transforming from, let's say, a join query into an intersect query and vice versa. Okay. So uh, in order to do this join, uh, what we discussed the last time was that we have two tables like this. So let's say uh, this is student table. So we need to rename this as student one and student two. And we will do a join to check if my student ID is equals to my the student ID from my S1 is equals to the student ID from my S2. And thereafter, I want to check if my course ID for S1 is equals to 211 and my course ID for S2 is equals to 225. And with that, we will then carry out a join from this table. So I think, sorry, this is the student table. And this is my uh, course table. This is my course table. Uh, 
and then I'll do a join between, uh, uh, between this table and this table, and I'll return out my S of name over here. Okay. 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 So let's do uh, let's do this uh, is uh, simple uh, easily first. So I need to uh, select. Uh, let, let's just do this join first. Huh? Uh, let's try to select SID from. I think this is RC. RC. And I'm going to rename it RC1. RC. Rename it RC2. Or from here. And also from student table. Where. RC1 dot SID equals to RC2 dot SID. So this is RC1, this is RC, RC2. RC1 dot SID equals to RC2 dot SID and CID equals to RC1 dot CID equals to 211 and rc2 dot cid equals to two two right so this will return me my my student id okay but if i really want the student name i need to add in one more condition let's say if i want the student name i need to add in one more condition which is n <coughs> student dot SID <coughs> equals to RC1 dot SID. And this will then return me the right student name over here. Okay. okay. Uh, so this is how we solve this this problem. Okay. Uh, the slides, I think there's some error here. I think I forgot to do one last join. Did I do did I yeah, you know, I did, I did, I did, I did, I did. yeah. So the last one is yeah, so the, the, the slides are fine. Okay. So I think this was where we ended last last week. Okay, let's look at uh, some examples. We want to find the pairs of students A and B where A's age is not the same as E's age. So uh, definitely we need to do a join here again. I would like you all to maybe take just uh, I know the solution on the next slide, uh, but maybe just take one minute to just think through this. And I'll go through the solution at 8.39. Okay. So about one, one minute around there. So yeah, just take a while to work through this. Uh, it is really helpful for you. Okay, so it's 8.39. Uh, I think, I hope I can uh, continue on. Okay, so how do we, maybe we look through, uh, we want the pairs of students, we want the pairs of students, A and B. So uh, in this case, we want the S name. So by this, we probably, probably know that we need two S names here. So yeah, we need two S names somewhere. So uh, of course we need the select statement. So we need two S names somewhere. And this are uh, this the student student table. And this is the student table. And so we will probably need to join between uh, these two tables. And then we want to carry out some processing on that. And we probably need a form. And I'm going to rename it as one. As two. And so 
because it is a pair of students, so it will be S1 dot S2 dot S And the condition will be where S1 dot H not equals to S2 dot H, which is not the same. Uh, but if you have this condition, what you end up with is that I'm going to have uh, uh, I'm going to have uh, Amy and uh, let's say uh, Alice and then we're going to have Alice in here as well. So in a, a, a better way to do this is actually S1.h like that. And this will be okay. Okay, okay. Good. Uh, so this is the solution. Uh, I don't think I need this one. I think this would do quite okay. Okay, let's look at the second example. Uh, find the student IDs where the score of 2 1 is higher than that of 2 2 5. Uh, I hope this works, but uh, maybe you want to take another one, two minutes to do this. Uh, I will go on to this at 8. 43. Just just try. It's going to, it, it's very similar to what we did the last time. And maybe uh just try. Okay, so it's say for the three, I'll go through the solution. So I need the student ID whose score of 211 is higher than that of 225. So I probably need a student uh, SID. Uh, so I, I can't, I think this is RC table. Yeah, this RC table. So uh, I probably need the RC or SID somewhere. So I need to select rc.sid from uh from somewhere from uh let's say this table rc and i'm going to rename it rc1 and i'm going to i need to do a join with myself so uh, rc rc2 okay so these will be the two tables that i will be uh, joining with uh i will need to do this rc rc one s i and what, what will be the conditions? So the condition is that it has got to be the same student. So because it is the same student, so uh, I will have rc one dot s i d equals to rc two dot s i d. So this will ensure that the student is the same. And the next thing is, I want to find out if my cost of RC1, is it 211, 211, and my cost of RC2, is it, oh, sorry, and my cost, is it 225? So I need an N, RC1.CID equals to 211, and rc2.cid equals to 225 <clears throat> and so I check that uh, in this big join that I'm doing uh, one of the uh, the student is the same across the row 
one of the calls is 211, the other cost is 225, and the final condition is my score of RC1 is greater than my score of RC2. Uh, gentle reminder, uh, please mark your attendance. Thank you. Okay, uh, so this is the solution. Okay, uh, the last one is find the SID of people who have never uh, take, taken a course by Edward. So if we go back to the way that we've been doing it, right, uh, probably this may be a, a solution that we may come up with. However, this is uh, not correct. Uh, what, what, maybe you can break down why is this not correct. So this is a join between RC, I think this is RC, this is instructor, and this is course. This is a join between these three. And what this join is doing is that you miss a word. <laughs> okay. What this joint is doing is that uh is that uh is that uh, uh I, I lost my thought. <laughs> what this joint is doing is that you are joining this with uh with this, yeah, with these two together, and then you are joining uh this instructor, uh this okay, this is this. And then you are saying if the name is not a word, then are you going to uh, flag it out? But this is not correct. Why? Because like, uh, if uh, how to say? Let's look at let's look at uh this uh who, who has taken the course by Edward? Edward is uh, let me see uh, let me see. If, uh, uh, this is not actually not a, not a good example because Edward in this database did not any cost uh, but let's let's say if we don't use a word let's say if we use uh, I think you found is a good example Lufang. let's say if it's Lufang. Lufang is 104 211 some uh, some okay so 403 did not take uh, take you found course before uh, but let's let's see 401 has taken you found course before uh, if we were to take this example and we say that okay, the, let's look at let's take, look at uh two two five, which is taken also by four one. Two two five this row, if we join this with this, this, with this, bottom is not equals to Liu Fang. So this row would be taken up. And you will pass the condition. So there'll be some other things and body. And this 225 will be joined with this table over here. And you have 403. Uh, what's the other things? Now? So if I were to carry out this query, for, sorry, this 401, if I were to carry out this query, student 401 would still be selected. Because although he had, although the student has taken 201, which is taught by Liu Fang, but because in this other queries, these other causes, right, they are not taught by uh, Liu Fang. And so they will also be selected out. They will be joined with this table, and they'll be uh, they'll they'll output. Yeah. So we can't do S one. Wait, sorry, sorry. That was another question. Uh, I'll get to that now. I'll get to that later on. Yeah. So so that is why uh that's why we, uh, in this query, this will be incorrect. Okay, so there was uh, any, uh, 
uh, there, there was one question that was raised up, which is this one. Uh, so if we are, so the question actually is a good question. If I do S1 dot SID, uh, this one only, right? What will happen if, uh, if, 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 if uh, I have a, uh, uh, if, if I have a H25 and H23, does it mean that this row will not be, uh, will not be taken out? So let's see what happens. Uh. If I have a uh, Amy, let's say I have Amy, which is 25, and I have uh, Alice, which is 23. So this row will be the result of the join. But at the same time, I also have Alice at 23, and I have Amy at 25. So with this condition, we will then take out this row. Yeah, so uh, the reason why we are doing this is that we are avoiding this duplication of uh, of having these two, if we do, don't, if we only do the not equal to, we'll be having this duplication of both Amy and Alice and Alice Amy. So if we do that, we are assured that there will be uh, so called the permutation that's present, and so we will uh, only take up one of the permutation. So that that was a question that was uh, posted privately. Uh. If, uh, if there are any other questions, I'll be also very happy to answer them. That's a good question. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, if all is good, we'll go on to lecture five. Okay, uh, let's close this. Is lecture five on, on Moodle? Uh? I can't remember if I put, put it there. Uh, okay, never mind. If I, if I forgot to put it there, I will put it there. Yeah, it's there. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, it's good. So everybody is on the same page. Okay. So let's let's do this together. So lecture five. Uh, so we in, in the last slide on lecture four, we talked about uh, we talked about uh, the issue if we want to find people that did not take any course by Edward. Yeah. So. Uh, so uh, yeah. So 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 what will happen? So and we we, we came up with uh, incorrect. So I or rather I came up with incorrect solution. Of that, and so right now we are going to find out how do we write queries that uh, uh that that ask write, write such queries. Okay, so again the sample database. So we have to sub do something called a sub query. Okay, so a sub query. There are many things that are there. So, for example, or rather, in the subquery, we are able to find uh, various uh, uh, permutations. Uh, for example, if an element is in a set, if it's uh, in the subset of another, or it's empty, if there exists a uh, duplicate uh, tuple in the set, uh, tuple in the set. Uh, so, it is very abstract. So, I think it's best to use an example to illustrate this. So the example is the following. Select star from student where S name is in Amy, John, or Rich. Okay. So it's gonna select the student where I have a name, which is in this. Okay. I'm going to try to do this to see whether it does this work well or not. I tried this uh how to say I tried this before the class. Uh I mean the queries work. Work would definitely work, work fine, but I, I don't know how it may work if I, if, if I do it in this manner. So if, if you think this is not working very well, let me know, and I'll just go according to the slides. So let's say if I'm doing a select stuff from student, where as name in, so I have Amy, Amy, John, so actually, if you have your know, MySQL out there, I, I actually I highly encourage you to try this out because you you really learn by by doing. Uh, it's quite hard to learn sometimes by watching your old man like me talk. So anyway, so let's say if you select stuff from a student, it will find from this sort list uh, whether which of the names exist inside this list. So basically, that is the concept of a subquery. What we are doing is that you can, if we are, if we replace this entire portion with a 
query, what the query returns is uh, can call it a list that looks like this. And it's going to select names from uh, the student table that are also present in this list. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to do another. Is so if you have the slides, you can you can in a way follow what I'm doing. So the next query I'm going to do is I'm going to do select S I B from R C where C I B equals to two one one. So if you follow, if you look at the slides, right, what you what you are what you are seeing is that this is the inner query. This is the inner query of my big query. Okay, so I have a outer query, I have inner query. So this is the inner query of uh, uh this inner query. When I execute the inner query by itself, right, this is gonna give me these three items: four, one, four, two, four, three, four, four, which are the students that have taken the Cause two one one before. So if I want to really, uh, in a way, find out my student IDs and my student names of uh, of people that have uh, taken course two one one before, if I want, I can do a, a, a so called the nested query ID as name from student where student ID in can you see I can maybe this is better yeah so this may be better yeah. so uh yeah so this is my sub query that I executed earlier and I'm selecting the student name as I student ID and the name from my student table where my student ID is in my this uh, earlier query. Earlier query was 4142404. Yep. And so right now, these are the people with both uh, that have taken my course 211. The IDs and the names of people that have taken my course 211. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So the next query we have is the students who have never taken any course lecture by Professor Edward before. Okay, so let us try to do this together. So as I mentioned uh, earlier, we will require a sub query to, to, to do this. And if you follow your slides, uh, what you are going to find is that, that the, the query is actually quite 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 complicated so but essentially what the inner query is doing is that it's trying to find students that have taken a course that is taught by professor edward okay so i'm going to show you this entire query is a join to show to extract out all the courses, or rather, sorry, all the students that have taken a course that has been taught by Edward. So, uh, I think I can copy and paste. I try to type this out, but uh, actually waste a lot of time typing. So I, I think it will be not the best use of your time. So I'm, I, I'm going to be a little bit lazy, but I, actually, I usually don't encourage this because when you type, you actually read one time. Yeah. So I, I was typing when I was practicing then. Really take a lot of time. So in the end I, I think this one better. Yeah. So as I mentioned, right, uh, this is an unfortunate example whereby uh, nobody ever in this database did not teach any courses. So if I were to use Liu Fang so I will be able to get uh, four one four two four four and these are the people that have taken some course by Liu Fang. So Liu Fang teaches two one one. 
two I used to teach two one one. Four. So this is a uh, a four one, four two, and four four. So you can tell these are the three courses that have been taught by Liu Fang, and these are the three students that have been taught by Liu Fang before. And so if we want to find out who has not been taught by Liu Fang, we want to find out the students that are not in this list. So I need to select SID from student where SID not in this query. Yeah, so these are the people in the database that has not taken any course by Liu Fang before. Magic. So hacky. <laughs> why is it so hacky? I, I don't know why is it so hacky. Uh, my, uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, anyway, uh, I don't know why. Uh, it's like that. Like, it's like that. Like, I don't know. <laughs> this is the first time I heard this kind of, uh, and it's quite extreme response. Uh. Yeah, but, but it's like that. Like, it's like that. It's really like that. It's, uh, the way to do it is really like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nah. So, uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah. So okay. So this is how how we we we, we find out the courses the, the students of people that did not take a course by uh, by Liu Fang. Okay. Uh, so the, going back to the slides, so we have the inner query and the outer query. So so usually for the inner query, we we turn out like a list or uh, and and from the outer query, we want to find we want to filter out whatever uh, we have from the, outer, from the outer query using the results from the inner query. Yeah, so that is essentially how, how this inner, outer, inner query, outer query, how it, how it works in tandem. So yeah, the inner query uses the value from the outer, outer query. So this is a, a very unique form of, of a query called a correlated query. Okay. So this is very, very unique. Uh, very easy to uh, to get confused. So um, notice here uh, actually this is actually very important. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, going to go back to this book. Notice that here, right? I'm using I'm using student table. This is very very important, and I'm also referencing student table here. This is a unique form of a, a, a unique form of a query, so called a sub query, called a correlated query. So in this correlated correlated query, right, the inner query is executed repeatedly for every single line in the outer query. Okay? So this doesn't work as an inner query by itself. So meaning that if you were to take this, and if you were, even if you put from RC student, right, and you execute it, it's not going to be the same as you doing these two queries together. Okay? So this, there's, uh, in a way you can say that there's a dependency. So the, Inner query in this case is affected by the outer query. So I wrote that it is easier to understand this if you consider the outer query to be a form of filtering for the inner query. Okay. It is uh, abstract, so it's going to be easier if we go through an example. Okay, how come my example is not here? Uh, okay, never mind. Uh, I thought I have an example. Okay, never mind. Uh, I, I, I'm just go through first. If I, if I hit the example, I'll, I'll go to that. Yeah. So uh, the next one is uh, sub query for sum or for all. So in this case, I'm going to select my name for my instructor, where workload is greater than all of select 
workload from instructor. In this case, what this is occurring is that this query returns me this workload. So it returns me 2.5, 2, 1.5, 1 1.5. Okay. And right now I'm going to select the instructor whereby my workload is less than or equal than all of the other instructor's workload. So what in English, right, what this query is trying to say is I want to find instructor with the least work or instructors with the least work. Okay. So uh, again, let's go on uh, our If you might mean so let's uh, select what load from instructor so this uh, is a bit different from the notes but uh, it, the, the principle is there so this is the list of all the workload values from the instructor and if i want to say that i want to find out who has the least workload of all the instructors right so i'm going to say i uh, need to uh, select where work load is less than equal them. I need the keyword of all over here. So these two have the same amount of workload and it is less than or equal than all the other workloads that we see in the instructor. If we don't have this all, I don't think it will work. Yeah, it's going to be an error. So I need the all because this is going to return me like a list, and I can't compare a single value with a list. So I, I would require the all keyword to be there. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, sum or all, um, back into this, find the students whose score of 2 on 1 is not the top student of the class. Okay, so let's look at how we may want to structure this. So, if we execute this inner query independently, we are going to have select the scores from uh, uh, select the scores from the course of 211 so this gives me all the scores from 211 okay so i'm going to uh, do this now Yeah. So these are all the scores from course 211. So three of them took the scores before, so the other scores. So I want to find out the students where his score is less than some of the uh, some of the uh, some of the scores that you see over there. So I want to find the students where he is not the score the score the top student. So in this case, it will be. I need to. I, I need to, the, to get the uh, student ID from uh, the table is RC, where my course goes to 211, and the score of it is going to be less than sum of. Actually, the formatting doesn't really matter, yeah. but it just looks nicer. Yeah. 
So these are the two people who are not the top students. Yeah. Okay. If I want to find out who is the so the, uh, the, the, the 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 like the bottom student, then I will have to. So four one uh, is uh, somewhat the the bottom student here la. Okay. Okay, so far. Okay, okay. Uh, very good. So let's go on to the next uh, next thing. Oh, so this is the answer, is it? Not the top student. Yeah. Uh, this is another way of uh, of doing the query, whereby the inner query selects what is the top score. And then I want to find out all the student IDs whose score is less than the top score. So this is the, another way of carrying out the query. Okay, I'm going to show this out for illustration. So if, if you have a uh, if you have this PHP Miami with you, and you will, you will need to have it when you are doing your assignment. So, so just might as well, might as well, uh, you know, uh, install it first. Because uh, you, you need it very soon anyway. Yeah. So this is the inner query. This inner query gives me the maximum score. Uh, gives me the maximum score. I think there's an error here. Uh, from uh, where uh, I think I need to uh, CID equals to four months. Yeah, I think this should be correct. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I uh, didn't uh, yeah didn't check that earlier. Uh, so this uh, the inner query should be there. Okay. Yeah, and then my outer query will be. Select uh, SID from RC where CID equals to 211 and score is less than the maximum score. So, so I, I, I hope I got the same answer. I can't remember. Uh, I hope I've got the same answer. 41404. If I don't, I will check why is it not 41404. Sign of belief. <laughs> it's the same answer. Okay, very good. Okay, so I'm going to go to the next. Okay. So, oh, I now recall why already. I, uh, let, let's see. So, let's see if we have this. If I do it in this way, I won't be able to get the right answer. So let's see if I want to say I want to uh, get this uh, score in this manner, right? What will happen is that this then becomes a correlated query. This would select the maximum score and it will be just the rule itself. So I'm going to show this now and I will explain why this is incorrect. Why, why this is like that. It's going to empty, yeah. So it's empty. So I'm going to take maybe uh, five more minutes of your time. Uh, I'm going to explain this. Why is this incorrect? This is an, an example of a correlated query. In this correlated query, query, what happens is that for every, it's going to say select SID from RC where CID equals to 21 and score less than select maximum score. So I'm going to have a score. I'm going to have a score. I'll see. 
and uh, SID. And uh, this is what? Uh, uh, CID and support. Notice that right now, my outer table is being referenced by my inner table here. And I'm going to, and, and because the reference is there, this becomes a correlated query. So what happens is that for every single row, this occurs. So let's say this is 81, 71, Every single row, it says that I'm going to select the maximum score, but it's only for that row. And this select maximum score will then be equals to 81. And so because for row number one, this select maximum score is going to be 81. And so the score that row is less than it's not less than 81, and so this will be empty. And now, you go on to the second row. In the second row, I will have a select maximum score again. The maximum score, again in the correlated query, only works on this row once more. And so because of that, the return for this in the second row is going to be 71 and the result of this query is going to be another null and so this will not be returned and this happens for every single row and then the return of this is going to be an empty set okay okay Okay, I will go through this. I realized that um, I, I found my my missing example already. It's actually here. So this is my example for my correlated query. So I, I don't know how come it got shifted all the way behind. Yeah, I think maybe I accidentally shifted or something. Uh, but this is the example for my correlated query. I don't think I want to go through it now. I think I'd rather you all go for a short break first. So please uh, go for a very quick five minutes break. We will be convening back at nine. 23. Yeah. So uh thank you so much for your for your time and attention and uh, I'll talk to you very soon. Hello. So it's uh, 928 and we're gonna start. So uh so before the before the break we are talking about correlated we we're talking about a few things. So before correlated queries, we talk about sub queries about in or uh, some data, some data, uh, data all, and then we talked about a little bit about uh, this form of uh, subquery. We came into our first correlated query whereby we have a reference in my inner query. Towards a table in my outer query. And we, 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 we went through this and we found that uh, this gives us an empty set. And we, we verified that with uh, my, my, my SQL, PHP my And the reason why, because in correlated queries, every single row is being executed on the query. And this example is hard to understand in detail. Uh, yeah, but uh, the next example is a good example to look at. The next example is a correlated query. And uh, I think let's look at this. Select SID excuse me, from RC, where the score of uh, 60 is greater than the scores where RSID from RC equals to RC to SID. Notice two things, a few things. Firstly, there's RC here, there's RCR here. This RCR here 
is what you have here. But this rc.sid comes from my external query. So what this means is that I'm going to have two tables. This is my original rc. This is my r. And what is going to happen is this. Every single row in my RC, every single row in my RC table, I'm going to run this query on the row itself. So let's look at the first row, which is 400. From 4001, what is happening is that it will then find out the scores, R score, where SID, R dot SID equals to 4001. Okay, so for the first row, I have 4001. It's going to take all the scores whereby, or rather, all the SIDs 4001 and return me the score. Okay. So in this example, I will have 87.5, 94, and 78 for my first row that I'm executing. Okay. Okay. And is 60 greater than all of these? Uh, it is not. And so the empty set is written. So in for the first row, nothing is written. So SID 401 is not written in this query. Any questions? Okay, so it will go the same for all my queries all the way down to this number. So at 406, at 406, it will take the row 406. Let's say at this 406, and it will exec <coughs> execute the inner query 406. So in the inner query, you will find out the R score where RSID is equal to RC.SID. And RC.SID, this is uh, 406, 406, and I have 151 and 34. So the scores that will be returned is going to be 51, uh, 51 and 34. And so this is uh, less than, or rather 60 is greater than all, both of these values. And so 4006 is going to be returned when I'm executing this uh, observation, this line. Now. Now, this is the first line. We also need to go through this line. And in this line, the same thing occurs again, and 400. And so when we do this query, we're going to end up with this result 406, 406. Okay. Any questions? Uh, the next line is the explanation for this. Uh, this takes a little bit of getting used to. Just to be clear, the, the inner query doesn't work if you execute it by itself without the outer coding. So you have to run this together with the inner coding. 
for this to be able to work. So in my current database, I don't have anybody below below uh, like six feet, so I need to choose a bigger number. So notice that 403, uh, to read this, I would think that 403 has two modules that they scroll below 90. Same with 404, same 405. And we can verify that by looking at this table. 403 has two that stop that got below uh, 90. 404 also has two. Uh, 405 is two. Let me look at the query again. Yeah, 405 is also comes up. Yeah, so uh, I didn't see 405 earlier. Yeah, so 405, 404, 403. So 402 has one. Uh, so uh, a 402 doesn't come out. Yeah, he has, uh, rather the, the, the student has a module that scored above 90, so he won't appear. Similarly with 401, uh, the student has a module that scored above 90. So 401 will not appear as well. Hence, the students that appear are 403, 404, 405. This is how the so called the uh, correlated query uh, looks like. May take a bit of time to get used to, but uh, this happens when in the inner query we are referencing a table from an outer query. And so every single line is being executed. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, any questions? <clears throat> okay, let's uh, look at uh, let's look at uh, this next uh, query. Find the cause where Amy got the lowest score among all the causes that that uh, that Amy has taken. So an uh, easier way that there are a few ways to do this. Uh, let's look at uh, <laughs> one that is a little bit more complex first. Yeah, so this is a, the one that's a little bit more complex, uh, whereby actually both are quite complex. But this is the one that uh, that uh, that that makes use of the concepts that we learn in in today's lecture. So I'm going to select all my scores from RC, where RSID equals to RC SID. So notice here. I have a RC here and the RC so immediately this says that this is a correlated related query so for every single row that comes here this row or oh, sorry this inner query is going to be executed so I'm going to remember, recall last, uh, like before the break, I said that this is something like a filtering example. This is a very clear scenario whereby, uh, whereby we are doing a bit of like a filtering. And I'm going to show you uh, why I'm saying that now. Okay. So, firstly, I am selecting the uh, so these are all basic joints. Now. So the main thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get firstly all the rows from student where the name is Amy. So there's Amy, Amy, Amy. And the important thing is I'm going to join them with my RC so that I know that in this I have a, I have a course ID. I have a course ID. I sure I don't need the course ID. I have this, but I need the score. So all this I have a score. But of course, uh, with any, every unique score, there's a course ID. Uh. And also with every so I get the outer query. In a way, you can consider this to it, it actually gives me a join that looks something like this. It's a join between my RC table and my student table. And I'm first. 
the first filter I'm having, I'm getting is where my student name is in it. So this is the first filter. The second filter that I want to get now like, is where I want to filter the scores that is the lowest. So in the score that is the lowest, right? What I want to do is uh, I want to do is I want to find out which score is going to be the lowest for every individual row that I have, that I have over here. So in, in this, I'm going to, for this row, I would then do a, uh, do, a <clears throat> do a query based on this row, and my join is based on my SID, which is 4001. And so I'm going to select the score. from this RC where my student is 401. Okay. So let's say uh it will, let, let's say if we do this right in our first table we're gonna get 211 uh this is very messy we're gonna do this right here Amy Amy in oh, uh, 401. And 211, 225, 228, 87.5, 94, and 78. So I'm, I will have to consider this row by row. So let's consider the first row first. In the first row, I'm going to find out the scores of this from my RC table where my student ID is equals to 401. And I select these scores and so I end up with 87.5, 94, and 78. And I want to find if 87.5 is less than 10 or, or equal than or less than or equal than all of my values that are returned from my inner query. Okay. And here we know that this is not true because this is more than that. I want to find the cost where Amy got the lowest score. So 201 is not the module where Amy got the lowest score. Okay. And I'm going to repeat this here. It's going to be exactly the same. And we know that again, no. So this is not the lowest score. And so it will not be returned. Then in my last row, it will do the same thing again and now I realize that yes this is the lowest score and now the module 288 is going to be okay. so this is how a correlated query is being Uh, how to say? Uh, the 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 it, the the yeah. So I would say that this looks a little bit like a filtering uh, query. Intuitive wise, right? Actually, uh, to me, it is not very intuitive. Yeah, which is why when I was doing this example, I gave another example as well. I'm not given that. Give another way of doing it, which is I can. Select the minimum score from my uh, from my table where my name is Amy, and then I would then find the the cost whereby Amy got this minimum score. So if I were to carry up, so what I described earlier, what I described is 
this query. So this is the correlated query. This uh, is just a normal uh, typical uh, nested. The spelling suddenly decreased a lot. PYPI, typical uh, nested query. So can change all to mean. Less than is mean the keyword? I don't know. You know. The question asks can change all to mean. I uh, I don't know. Is minimum a keyword? Let's try. Let's try. Okay. Mm. So the irritating thing is wrong. Change all. To Okay, so to do it, minimum. Yeah, I can't. I don't think I don't think minimum is a keyword. I can't see the error. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think I don't think I can do that. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So yeah. But uh, I believe why because like. Minimum cannot be in the where condition. Minimum can only be in your select, your ag aggregation functions can only be in your select uh, clauses and also in your having clauses. You can't have a aggregation function in your where condition, I think. But what I can show you is this other method. May be a little bit more intuitive. So notice that I have the minimum, uh, the minimum uh, aggregation function in here in my select uh, condition because uh, you can't. If I'm not wrong, actually, uh, not not I, I cannot say if I'm not wrong. I I'm quite sure you cannot put it here. Yeah. So yeah. So uh, yeah. So so yeah. So if you do this you will have the minimum score here. And then, yeah, correct. Yes, Mr. Jiang is correct. You want to select minimum put your field here. So you can do the, uh, do this way, which is first the inner query to get the minimum score that Amy did. And then thereafter, you do the outer query here. Which to me is a little bit more intuitive. Yeah, it's, a, it's really a little bit more intuitive. Uh. So, actually, to be frank, if I were to do it, this would be the way I would do it. Uh. Uh, the correlated query, yeah, maybe I'm not that used to it yet. Yeah, but uh, I, would, I, would, I would do something like this. Of course, the downside with, to this is that I think this is taking one or two more joins as compared with the correlated query. So in terms of, excuse me, in terms of processing, right, this is not as efficient. Okay, I uh, hope this is uh, clear. Uh, this is one of the harder things that, not harder things, are uh, things that uh, just isn't natural, uh, isn't as natural as what you, uh, what we usually how we usually think queries to be. Okay, so uh, some other uh, equivalence, equivalences. So expression, uh, this in is equals to thumb. So these two are exactly the same. So, uh, so these two are in is equals to thumb, but, uh, not, but uh, not in is equals to not all, but not all is not equals to not sum. Okay, so the optimizing to be the same. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully optimizes to be the same. I, actually, I don't know about the inner workings if they are able to, if they will be optimizing it to be the same. Uh, it, it may be the case, but it will, it, they may optimize it to be the same. Uh. Yeah, so it may be the case, uh, but uh, but my, my, yeah, though I really don't know, and I can't comment that much. Yeah, I can't comment. Yeah, it may be the case that by the optimize it to be the same. Yeah, but I can't give a for sure kind of a uh, answer that is the, that is the case. Uh. 
Yeah, but it's a good point. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Uh. Okay, so uh, let's see the what the what these queries actually give us. Uh, I think this is quite intuitive. Uh, okay, in something equals to some 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 or something. Uh, I think this is quite intuitive. Um, yeah, so I, I think I, I don't go. Okay, maybe just quickly uh, quickly go through things. So, uh, yeah. so my one of my classes last time uh, always accused me of thinking through things that I should not think through. Yeah. So uh, yeah. yeah, as you can see now. It really shows that I should not skip through because now there's error. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is a correlated query. Yeah, so I can't do this. Sorry. So maybe let's go through this. Maybe let's go through this. Uh, since this is a correlated query, uh, it may make some, uh, it may be good to go through this. So uh, this is a correlated query. <clears throat> S. Is here, is here, S is here, is here. So for every student, every student, I am going to select this query. So it is something like filtering from my from my student table the IDs where I have taken the course two and one. So Right now, I have a, let's say for every student, I have a course ID of 211 and a student ID here. And in my author table, I have a student. And uh, 401. O, 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 two, o, 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 three. And for every student here, I'm going to I'm going to select if the rows whereby the student ID is equals to four o, 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 one and also my course ID is equals to two one one. And I'm going to from there select out my student ID. So after that, this will SID equals to sum in this list that is being written. So I'm going to find out the students that are enrolled in my course 211. So I understand this is a little bit of a convoluted way to write this query. It's a little bit strange, but essentially this is what this uh, very uh, this correlated query is is trying to do. The thing I think uh, I think the uh, item that you uh, that this slide is trying to express is that is that this in and this sum is returns the same result. Yeah so yeah so if 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 in the scenario if in the scenario that uh, we we know that 403 I uh, did not take the 211. So there's no, so I have 402 and then 4004. 211, 211. So in the event that this, or rather when 403 does not take 211, like what is returned here in this correlated query when I hit this row, right, it's going to be an empty set. And in this empty set, uh, this is not in, it's not, uh, it's not in this, also not sum of this. And so for this row, uh, nothing will be returned. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Mm, yeah. I'm going to go uh, next slide. In the next slide, I have a uh, S name. I'm selecting it. So maybe let's let's go through this uh, uh, slowly. <laughs> yeah. Let's go through this slowly. So not in. Uh, I think it's not a correlated query. 
So this is just a typical query by itself. Again, I'm connecting students who took to one one. So all these three just select students for me who took to one one. They all just share the same. So this is student ID where not in students that took to one one. So yeah, there's a detail in the room. So <laughs> sorry. So uh uh yeah, so these are students that did not take course to one one. These are the people that took 211. These are the people that did not take 211. And I'm going to return the names. Okay. So let's look at the second query. It's actually almost exactly the same. These are the students that are not in all of this query. So this query is going to return me this. And which is my ID, which is not in all of this. Okay. And we, we, uh, this is actually quite uh, quite easy to mix up this all and this sum. Uh, this sum will actually return me everything again. So uh, this is worth uh, trying it out. Okay, let's try this out in the code. So let's do this inner query first. If I'm too slow, let me know. Yeah. So sometimes I'm too slow, sometimes I'm too fast or something. Yeah. So if I'm too slow, just let me know. So this is my inner query. These are all the people that have taken course 201. And uh, let's see if I do this. So these are the people that did not take 211. Uh, I think I'm going to uh, return my SID. So these are the people that uh, did not take 211. SID and the name. Yeah. So I'm going to uh, do what the, uh, if it is SID not in all. So uh, fortunately, I get the same result. But what if I change this to not in some? Yeah. So uh, let's 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 do this again. Huh? Uh, so uh, let's say I have. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, it's this this funny bug is uh, flying in my room. So uh, it's a bit distracted. So let's, uh, let's see this. Huh? Mm. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, there's no SID. Uh, never mind. So let's re remember four, one, three, four, five, six. So these are the people that have uh, uh, that came from our previous query. So this should give us the people that did not take uh, that that took two one one, which is four one four two four oh four. But if we look at this, it actually returns us with everybody. Yeah, so it actually returns me everybody. Why? Because everybody in my student table is not equals to some of this. And so the first person comes in, not equals to some of my three of the uh, so called SID is not equal to sum of this, and so it be returned, and so so everybody will be returned. So I, I don't know if, if you are uh, if I'm I'm so uh, how do I put this up? Uh? So uh, let's let uh, let me say this uh. So let's say right. Let's say uh.
Okay, let's say this student ID in my auto query is 4001, 4002, all the way to 4004. And this inner query is 4001, 4002, and 4004. So 401, right? It's not equals to some of the guys here, right? So, so you'll be written. Uh. So 402 is also not equal to some of the people here. So it's going to be written also. And likewise for uh, 403, uh, yeah, it's not equal to somebody here. It's also written. So in the end, this query ends up returning everybody. Everybody from student S. Okay. Hmm. Okay, very good. <laughs> I hope this is clear. Yeah. Okay. Let's do look at the look at the next one. Uh not exist. So again, this is a very convoluted uh, query. Uh so let's break this down uh, step by step. Easiest to uh see a few things. So firstly, this uh let's see. There's a student here. Uh, student here. So it is likely that this is going to be a correlated query. So for every student, I'm going to carry out this query here. Okay, let's look at the rest of the query first. So there's a join between both RC and my core. And there's a join between my course ID and my instructor ID, join between this and this. So I'm probably looking for the courses that have been taught by Liu Fang. Okay, so let's look at just this, this, and this alone. Right? I'm probably looking at the courses that have been taught by Liu Fang. Okay, and is let's say I'm going to look at this join again. Right? I am probably looking at the students that have taken a course that was taught by Liu Fang. Okay. 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 So up to now, uh, it's okay, right? Okay. Up to now, uh, up to now what we are doing, we're just dissecting what the query probably looks like. So right now, at least from the inner query, it, it, it seems to say that we are trying to find out which are the students that have been taught by Liu Fang. And if I have a not exist here, it probably means that I'm trying to find the students that uh, that were not taught by Liu Fang. Okay. Is the table name? No, actually no. Yeah, it's actually a good question. A table name in my school is actually not case sensitive. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, so essentially what this question is, or what, what this query is looking at is I want to find out the students that have not been taught by Liu Fang. Okay, so now let, let's break this down like step by step. So let's say uh, in our student table, there is a, a correlated query. So every single one is being uh, 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 and for every single row, we will have to carry out this query. So in this query, I will have to I, I'm going to do a join between my RC, my course, and so I end up with a very big so-called join, and I filter by the causes of 4001. And this is my first filter, and I also filter by the instructor Liu Fang. So it, it selects everything and it finds if <clears throat> it finds if this so-called 401 does it exist in this query or not. If it exists in this query, it means that uh, it has been taught by Liu Fang before. I want to find if it does not exist here. So if 401 is the first row I'm looking at, 
and four one is in my inner query. That means that it 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 it, it exists in my inner query, and so it will not be returned. Same thing with all two. It exists in my inner query, and so it will also not be returned. Same thing with oh no, sorry. In four o three, four o three did not take two one one, so four o three was not taught by Liu Fang before. So four o three in my inner query will return an empty set, and four o three does not exist in my empty set, and so four o three will be returned as my result in this query. Okay. Yeah, very distracted by that. But so anyway, uh, uh, this is not exist. You you notice that it not exists. Like uh, you don't really specify a field. So yeah. So let's compare this with not in. In not in, you have to specify the exact field. So these two things are doing uh quite exactly the same thing. So in not in, you uh specify the field. Uh, here and also specify the field here. So this name is not in this list that returns. Uh, both will give you the same result, but in not in, you have to so called uh, explicitly specify the few in order to uh, to, uh, to filter out the students that you don't want to uh, don't want it to. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's good. I will go through one last example, and then I think uh, I think yeah, I go through one last example, which is this one. Mm, yeah, I think I think I can go through one last example before we take a rest. Yeah. So in this last example, I will. Uh, this is a. Uh, Example with a uh, difference. So let's say we want to find the workload, the difference in workload between two or the instructors. So we usually we usually do that in our select statement. So what we do is we again right now we are doing a join. So we are doing a join of this is the instructor table. Instructor table. So I have I1. I also have I2. So when I carry out a join of these two tables, what I will have is so I will have uh, and I'm going to join them based on the condition where my I1 workload is greater than I2 workload. So it be called right in the earlier earlier part when we do the join the first thing is the first step is like a, a cross product la, a partition product yeah uh, now right now i'm going to limit it this partition product to like a beta join whereby the, my condition is my workload of i1 has got greater than the workload of i2 so uh let's see look at this example uh. so it's going to be at work and then uh, let's let's say uh this is uh uh 2.5 uh, and it's going to be uh, Vadim which is 2 uh, this is going to be Fabu which is 1.5 and Liu Fang which is 1.5 so at word at word 2.5 2.5 and if we were to continue this this will look like uh, Vadim and uh, this will be Fabu and Liu Fang uh, 2, 2, 1.5, 1.5, and then let's see if I, uh, Pabu, uh, will not, uh, so that's it, that's it, so that's it. Okay, so that's it. So this is the result of my drawing of uh, this, this, uh, of my, this data drawing. The next thing I want to do is I want to extract out my name from here and my name from there. And I want to take this workload, subtract from this workload. So I have 
my i name which is this and my uh, i name two which is here this minus this so that's why i have edward here 2.5 minus vadim which is two which is this over here i have edward and prabhu uh 2.5 minus 1.5 which is one edward 2.5 minus the fang 2.5 1.5 uh, yeah, which is here. And I have Vadim minus uh, Prabhu, which is 0 0.5 over here. And Vadim minus 2 pound, which is 0 0.5 over here. Okay. So this is how we construct the table as you see over, uh, as you see here. Okay. So the time now is 10.10. 10. Uh, uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us this evening for the uh, lecture. Wait, I'm going to stop this. Yeah, thank you so thank you so much for joining.